Thank you so much. Uh, well, on behalf of the Pierce Conservation District, I would like to welcome you all to our annual conservation celebration. My name is Jeanette Dorner, and I have the honor of serving as chair of the board of the Conservation District. And it is lovely to see so many of you come out tonight to learn a little bit more about our programs and to, uh, to share in our celebration and to help us to honor some of our valued partners, volunteers, and community members. Um, so we promised you an informal evening of reflection, delicious refreshments. Were the refreshments delicious? Okay, good. All right, so we can check that box. And now it's time to transition into recognizing individuals and organizations that have stood out as recipients of our Conservation District Annual Conservation Awards. This is one of my favorite parts of the evening, to really recognize the partners and the people in the community that we work with that help us do the good work that we do out in the community, because we really couldn't do this work without the support of all the wonderful people that we work with. Um, and so it's good to stop and remember and honor those folks. So, but before we begin the award ceremony, uh, we wanted to make sure that we also recognize our wonderful staff and our board members. Um, so first, can we have all the conservation staff, district staff, can you either stand or wave if you're already standing? Everybody give them a hand. So many great people. These are the people who are doing the boots on the ground work. That's what we like to call it. Going out, working with people in the community, volunteers, land managers to promote natural resource conservation. And uh, they just do incredible work out there every day, getting good things done. And it's just so inspiring to hear about the things that they accomplish with the help of our folks in the community. Um, I also wanted to recognize if we have any elected official, officials present this evening. I think I saw, saw a couple. If, if you could raise a, a stand up or raise your hand, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate the support of, uh, of the, our elected officials and working with our partner jurisdictions is a critical part of the work that we do. Um, and so then also our board, we do have uh, uh, some of our board members here tonight. Um, let's see where they all are. If, if board members could stand up. We have Julia Amon. There's Jim Grove. Do we have anybody? Oh, there's Amy Moreno Sills. Dana, is anybody else here? John had to leave. John Hopkins was here, but he had another event, so. Hopefully some of you got to say hi to him. And we also have Mark, Mark Morin, who is on our board as well, who I don't, I, and Stu Treefry, who is an associate supervisor. Um, so before we get rolling with the awards, uh, at every board meeting, we always do a land acknowledgement, and we also have a lovely video to do um, a land acknowledgement tonight. And so I'm gonna let the team run that video. and we're gonna see if it works. This is the ultimate test. You guys are being so good. Is it not working? All right, so we want to acknowledge that we are on the traditional homelands of the Coast Salish people who have lived on and stewarded this land since time immemorial and we appreciate their partnership in the work that we do to take care of this special place. Good. All right, so now I have the honor of introducing our illustrious executive director, Dana Coggin, who's gonna say a few words and then we'll get rolling.
Well, good evening. Thank you all for being here. Um, Jeanette, thank you also for, or whoever moved the salmon down, because I realized that when I was standing here, I couldn't see any of you, and that also meant you couldn't see me, but maybe I should put it back, just in case. Um, again, thank you all for being here. I think, um, as many of you know, we do some amazing work with the Conservation District. I feel so honored to be able to work with such amazing folks. If you are part of the PCD staff or family, please stand or wave your hand so that those in the room can see who you are and can have as much joy as I have in the fact that we all get to work together. So, <laughs> PCD staff, excellent, great. We've got some still waving in the back, so good job, well done waving in the back, yes. Excellent. Thank you to the staff, and Gracie, thank you to you and your team for all of your hard work in putting this event together. For those of you who've never put on an event like this, I can tell you this started last year. At the end of last year's event, we started planning this year's event. So as we are all here together, we are standing on the shoulders of a year's worth of work, and Grace, you came in kind of midstream through that process and really just kind of ran with it. So thank you very much for all of your hard work. I also want to thank everyone who is here as an elected official. I know that this is a very busy night. I think many of us had about 20 different things to go to. And those of you, if any of you follow me on social media, this will be the only thing I'm at tonight. <laughs> so if you'd like to take photos with a little Dana face at something else, feel free. But this is the one I'm at tonight. So um, I'm really excited that we get to honor our community members. We have such a depth of giving and love and engagement in our region for farms, fish, food, and friends. When I talk about the district and people ask what we do, I really narrow it down to just that. If you like farms and you like to eat, we do that. If you like trees and you like to breathe, we got you. If you like the environment and you like salmon, we can help with that too. Hopefully you had a chance to get around and actually see some of the, the good work that we do. Our team is everywhere in Pierce County. I had somebody say to me earlier tonight, they said, well, it seems like every time I come, I learn something new and I learn that you do something more. And I said, well, great. I want that to continually be the narrative that we have because we want to continue to grow with all of you and we want to continue to support our community and the environment. We were just here a few weeks ago for a seed swap where we actually got to share seeds. And then we'll be back here the following year where people who took seeds last week will be able to share their seeds back out with community yet again. And the cycle will continue. So I'm excited that we are all part of that cycle. I actually do have a script and none of that was on script. So I'm probably getting in trouble from the people who are like, look, Dana, you said two minutes. You're over your two minutes. Um, I did want to point out that we do have some raffle tickets out there. How many of you have done the raffle tonight? How many of you are enjoying the raffle? How many of you are frustrated by it too? I did. I kind of put mine down. I was like, that's really neat. You all did a great job. Good job team for putting together that raffle. If you haven't already done your raffle, make sure to turn your things in. I did want to point out that we have some amazing items in that raffle, but one of the things in particular that I want to share with you is that we have a rain barrel from one of our esteemed community members who actually passed away this last year. We fondly referred to him as Dan Dan the Rain Barrel Man. Dan, um, unfortunately, is no longer with us, but I like to say that he is with us in spirit in every rain garden we do and every drop of water that hits this community because Dan was enthusiastic about making sure that everybody knew that we could do just one thing. If we had just one rain barrel, we could make one drop of a difference. So as we kind of go through the evening, make sure to get your raffle in and make sure to think about Dan and think about that one drop. We are all that one drop in the bucket and we are all that one drop in the stream that helps that salmon make its way out and back to our communities. I also wanted to point out that we have some trees on your table. Anybody see the trees? Okay, good. If you didn't see the trees, we would have a conversation. This is a tree. 
Uh, these are actually trees that were donated back to us. Again, this is that wonderful cycle. These are from the Tacoma Tree Foundation. And these trees actually came in as a piece from the, the tree foundation from our plant sale. So they were part of our system. We sent them out to the community, and then the community has brought them back. And then we want you to take them with you when you're done with the evening. But that's not what you're here for. You're here for the awards, right? Actually, I was here for the meatballs. Um, but we do want to take some time tonight to honor the folks who have put in tireless hours of work and love and compassion into our community and who've done work for generations under the radar. And I do mean some of them for generations. Our first award is an award that we don't always give out. It's reserved for individuals that have demonstrated the highest degree of devotion to our community. They've given blood, sweat, and tears to support the natural resources and con conserving the areas that we love. They've done work usually through their entire lifetime, and so this is what we call a Lifetime Achievement Award. So the Lifetime Achievement Award tonight has a couple of caveats with it. This is for Ernie Bay. Ernie Bay was a great part of the Conservation District family. Ernie worked tirelessly to make sure that our community was going to be healthy, whole for generations to come. And so the folks who get these awards, or this award, are folks who have literally planted the seeds of the future. They've given a lifetime of energy and love to conservation. And I cannot do justice to the folks who are up for this award, but Jeanette, I'm gonna ask you to speak to the great longevity of this community member. All right, thank you, Dana. So I have the honor of talking about our um, Ernie Bay Lifetime Achievement Award recipients tonight. Um, and I was talking with Dana, um, you know, a lot of us working in conservation, we're always focused on what's still left to do, what, what we see out there that still needs help um, to conserve in the community. But it's important to sometimes pause and celebrate successes and remember and be grateful for all that was done before. And there is a lot that has been done. And especially to recognize and thank our elders. Uh, the generation of Pierce County conservation advocates that first began organizing in the 1960s included locally well-known names such as Helen Engel and Thelma Gilmer, the founding mothers of Tahoma Audubon. And uh, we honored Helen Engel with one of those of these awards a few years back. Um, but there were also others that maybe didn't have quite the same name recognition that were active in making a huge difference in our community and that are also deserving of our thanks. So I wanna do some, an exercise with all of you first before I talk specifically about these folks. So please raise your hand and then keep it raised for a few minutes here. If you've ever had the opportunity to visit the Breezeman Forest in Spanaway Lake Park, Okay, keep your hands up. The Parkland Prairie. More hands going up. How about the Snake Lake Nature Center in Tacoma? Okay, more hands coming up. How many folks have gone out to the Carbon River entrance to Mount Rainier? Got a few more. How about the Billy Frank Jr. Nisqually National Wildlife Refuge? Okay, take a minute and look around at all the hands in the room. How many of you are grateful that these places have been protected and are available for us to go and enjoy? So the folks that are receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award had a role to play in the protection and the stewardship of all of those places that I just listed off. So Ken and Nell Backer 
They moved to Pierce County in 1965 when Ken was hired to teach math at Pacific Lutheran University. While Ken worked as a math professor and Nell, who was a former nurse, became a stay-at-home mom, they both cared deeply for the conservation of this community and they became advocates and educators for conservation. Many of you might not be familiar with their contributions, although I think there's a few in the room that are very familiar. I've got some uh, supporters here tonight. But this is because although they were always ready to work with others to get good conservation work done, they were never interested in getting the credit. But they never met a conservation cause or an organization they didn't like. When I was talking to people about what are the things that they were involved in, so they were founding members of Pierce County's Tahoma Audubon chapter in the late 1960s. Ken was a founding member of the Friends of Nisqually Wildlife Refuge, and he served on the board of Tahoma Land Conservancy. Other organizations they supported over the years included the Nisqually Land Trust, Communities for a Healthy Bay, Rails to Trails, Plant Amnesty, and the Washington Native Plant Society. They were one of the first customers of our Conservation District annual plant sale. And they were loyal customers for many years, and they were excellent salespeople, convincing others to use native plants in their gardens. Ken also was known for the bird walks that he led including an annual birdathon trip that would go from the Nisqually Refuge out to Bowerman Basin in Grace Harbor. They also, they advocated for the passage of the Growth Management Act, and Nell actually filed the first Growth Management Act court case in the state after it became law. She and Ken also supported the creation of Pierce County's Conservation Futures Program, which has helped to conserve countless acres of land in the county over the years. Those that are familiar with the backers know that Nell organized countless yard sales and rummage sales to raise money to care for both the Breezeman Forest at Spanaway Lake Park and also at Snake Lake. And her friend and co-conspirator, Roxy Giddings, who I think I saw here tonight, <laughs> remember she was telling me a story the other day about how Nell helped and she organized a prison crew to pull invasive plants out at Spanaway Lake Park. And she got donuts and Kool-Aid for them, and then she taught them how to pull ivy and blackberries. And one of them went and crawled under the blackberries and pulled out the ivy from the roots. One of the big things that happened is when Nell learned that the county was getting ready to trade a section of forest land up near the Carbon River that included some beautiful old growth, 640 acres of forest land for some significantly less valuable land. She organized people and convinced the county to not go through with it. And that led to a whole process that they were both involved in to protect neighboring lands of the Carbon River entrance to Mount Rainier, including the addition of hundreds of acres to the park and the protection of hundreds of acres of forest just outside the park entrance. I talked to Kirk Kirkland from the Tahoma Audubon Society, who was active for years, and who told me he saw Nell as a mentor. And he said to me, she was an enchantress. She gave people like me a walk through the Breezeman Forest and taught me how all the trees and the understory is not just a forest, but a complete organism. Roxy told me another story about Nell. She called her Sweet Nell, and how good-natured she was. And she said how every once in a while, I needed to get a dose of Nell back her. She made me laugh. We would walk in the woods at the Breezeman Forest, and the sun would shine through the native vine maples, and it was just gorgeous, and it would be like some beans in your hand. And she would say, just walk, take it easy. Roxy's son, Winfield, that's here tonight also, remembers the bird box that Ken led from the refuge out to Grace Harbor, and how impressed he was that Ken had the whole bird list of 80 to 100 species in his head. Didn't have to look anybody up. Dave, his son, their son, who's here tonight, 
told me how he remembers growing up, going to countless meetings and hearings with his parents as they monitored and spoke up for conservation. He told me it was watching his parents that he learned that if you were civically active, you could make a difference. Just today, I had the chance to talk with Jeffrey Thomas, who is the Puyallup Tribe's Timber Fish and Wildlife Director. And he worked with Nell in the 1990s. He went to a number of meetings where she was at. And he talked about how active she was on issues of growth management and forest protection. And he told me a lot of people would back away from those issues and she would step into them. She would wait patiently at those meetings and then step forward and say her piece. She recognized the idea of cultural ecosystem services. She valued having native people reconnected to their lands and the protection of culturally significant plants. Of environmental icons in the community, she is at the top of my list. All of us in Pierce County working on conservation owe a debt of gratitude to those who came before and we are able to stand on their shoulders to carry on their legacy of conservation. A huge thank you to both Ken and Nell for all they have done to make this place such a special place. anything on his behalf and, and Nell could not be here tonight unfortunately she was not well enough to attend but I think she might be watching on FaceTime and uh, we're gonna provide the uh, so everyone say hi to Nell excellent you want to say something yeah to thank you so much Jeanette that's <laughs> so kind and I wanted to say that uh, sorry. Well, as Jeanette said, my parents never expected any recognition, so that's very, very kind of you to do that. <laughs> and Nell's in her hospital bed, but she still had us writing not, not, not too many months ago on more letters to the county. And I think the good lesson from then, if, if you want to kind of be an activist for 60 years, they had such a good attitude. Yes, they lose, and I can remember Roxy and my mom, so many losses on land use planning, and one day they won and they were so shocked and surprised, and yet they did everything very cheerfully and exciting, and it was a group of friends, everybody together, none of those accomplishments were just a few people. So I think that persistence and looking at, looking at it forward with real optimism is what uh, helped me and many of us. So I think that's something we can take of their spirit forward. Thank you. Well, I think that's a great way to kick off awards, is it not? the legacy, and that's what this is all about. The great thing about what we get to do with the Conservation District is that this goes beyond us, which is fantastic. So thank you for all of your love and your caring, Ken and Nell. I wanted to point out that our awards tonight are made by a local artist, and they are repurposed materials. Aaron Gudich from, Gudich, sorry, yeah, from, uh, a local art consortium here in the area was nice enough to help us out last year with the awards and when we called back this year and said you did a really good job he said great can I do it again he said you bet these awards are pretty amazing because they also are a testament to the continuation of what things were what they were purposed as and now what their new purpose is as we move forward
The next award that we get to present, I'm actually going to invite Allie up. So the great thing about the way that we do awards is that it's not just one of us standing up here, but it's actually the individuals who have worked with these community members who actually get to share and get to give these awards. So Allie, if you join and I, I think I saw Emily and Brian here tonight. Where? There they are. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Um, so I've had the pleasure of working with Emily and Brian over the last several years. Um, and um, Emily is a member of our community who puts sustainable farm practices at the forefront of the food and the fibers uh, she provides for us. She and her partner Brian established local color farm and fiber in 2018 on a beautiful piece of land along the Puyallup River with a vision to not only provide healthy food and fibers to our community, but to maximize the ecosystem services of their farmland. Um, to that end, they have set about rejuvenating tired soils via best management practices like cover cropping, crop rotation, livestock integration, rotational grazing and composting. Um, they have undertaken a large-scale riparian buffer improvement project with a vision to replace invasives along the Puyallup River with um, native pollinator habitat hedgerow. And um, to top all this off, in 2023, they completed a truly marathon irrigation efficiency project um, to enable them to best steward the water their sustainable farm operation relies on. Um, Emily, we are also grateful for your willingness to share your farming experiences with others. Uh, you are a frequent guest, at, guest uh, at, at various community events, and including WSU's recent SoilCon conference that aims to connect farmers and community members with the latest innovations in soil health science. Um, Emily, you are a standout crafter and farmer in our community and we thank you for your outstanding support and empathy for your community. And we at Pierce Conservation District hope to continue supporting your farmer, farming endeavors in any way we can. So thank you and congratulations. Thanks to PCD, especially Allie, and all of our past farm planners, uh, Renee and Robin. Um, I guess uh, since we're like relatively new to the community, um, especially compared to our last honorees, um, and I guess we wouldn't be here without all of PCD's support. So, thanks. So many people up here and so many other notes. I think my personal ones maybe walk away. That's okay. All right. Uh, next up, we have our Partner of the Year Award. Um, our Partner of the Year Award is an individual who has worked with us for many, many years in many capacities. This partner is one that we know is a crucial part of our community because they always show up when we ask them to. The partner of the year would be presented by uh, Kristen MacGyver, but um, she happens to be in Hawaii and she decided she wasn't gonna fly back for this, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but she does send her love from Hawaii and sent along a fantastic, fantastic piece for us to get to share with all of you. And one of the things I love about these awards is that I get to learn so much about the community members that make us even better as an organization. Diane Evans, who I know I saw here. Diane is in the back there. 
Diane is one of Harvest Pierce County's most astute partners. Diane has worked with the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department and with her capacity there has worked directly with our HPC team. Diane continuously aims to support the mission of equity and food justice in our region. In every position that she has held, she has continued to carry those values forward and has continued to invite us to the table. With each time that we get to work with her, our organization grows and our organizations together become stronger. Diane always has an open heart and an, op and an open door and an ear to listen. She is willing at any time to say, how can I help? She listens and provides feedback when we need to change maybe a few things just to make sure we're not missing anything. She is always at the ready to be our champion. She's worked tirelessly with the Bamboo, Golden Bamboo Group, and has actually worked to help create safer communities for us all. It's not just through food that she shares her love for our community, but it is through opening her arms, providing safety, and providing opportunities for everyone to be seen and for everyone to be at the table. Diane, if you would join me up here, we would love to present you with our Partner of the Year Award. We know that the work that you do Thank you so much. Um, this is a great honor. And um, I'm sorry Kristen couldn't be here, um, but I truly understand her need to be in Hawaii right now, especially this time of year. Um, next time I wish like she'd let me know. I'd take me with her, maybe. Um, but I seriously love the Conservation District, love Harvest Pierce County and all the staff. You all are amazing people. Um, Dana, you have an amazing organization. and. Um, I'm so honored to be able to work with you on any given day. So thank you all so much. This truly is appreciated. I could have Chris Tao join me. Chris is um, our uh, environmental education director at PCB. And Chris gets to do Chris gets to do all the fun things that I'm always like, hey Chris, can I come along to that salmon release too? Can I come and do all the fun things? So Chris is going to share uh, with us um, the Educator of the Year award. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Tao. I run the environmental education program at the Conservation District, and I'm here to present our Educator of the Year Award tonight, and I'm proud to present it to uh, Laura Young, a teacher at Emerald Hills Elementary uh, in Bonnie Lake. Um, when asked to describe Laura, we got words back like energetic, resourceful, um, passionate, uh, groovy even. Um, <laughs> She is a music teacher as well, so that, that tracks. And these traits and so many more uh, make her so deserving of our Educator of the Year um, Award. Her commitment to raise thoughtful land stewards of the future is crystal clear. Um, many times when I've pulled up to the school um, for my lessons, I see Laura walking a trail of students around the school, pointing out native plants and uh, small creatures that they find in the forest. Um, sometimes even an unintentional uh, hornet's nest that they find um, as well. Uh, so I've been going to Emerald Hills for many years now, 
and it's such a special school and people like Laura definitely make it uh, make it so um, she runs a garden program at the school a very cool school garden which is really fun and I invite you to check out sometime at one of her garden festivals and or work parties that she's always recruiting volunteers for um, she recently started an after-school green club so students can be out in the garden and learn about the environment She's won several grants and even was telling me about a donation that she received recently uh, for plants and materials to beautify uh, the school there at Emerald Hills and make it a sustainable place to learn. And her dream is to have a working farm right across the school that they can go to every day and I hope she gets to achieve that one day. Um, so we'll put in a good word for you if, if we can. Um, in 2023 in particular, she partnered with us and the health department um, to have the second graders make a stormwater art calendar where they could create artwork to share what they've learned about pollution and how they can protect um, Lake Taps. Uh, she's also spent lots of Saturdays out at South Prairie Creek, so she crosses programs here at PCD, and she's put a lot of trees in the ground out at South Prairie Creek uh, Preserve as well. So we here at PCD uh, so appreciate her commitment to stewardship and stewarding the younger generation. Um, and we know the future is in great hands with uh, teachers like Laura. So if you'd come up and accept your award, we'd love to have you up here. Well, as my friend said, teachers are going to teach, so I did prepare something to say, otherwise I have a nasty habit of telling jokes, and so if you will just indulge me for a few minutes, I would appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity to speak about this because um, as an old friend of mine recently shared on a viral Instagram post, the message is love. So I'm grateful for this recognition, but I actually want to use the moment to acknowledge that the work we do here does not belong to us. It belongs to the many generations of black, brown, indigenous, non-binary, queer, and disabled visionaries who have long spoken, written, and fearlessly sung for the global liberation of humanity and the planet alike. I am a product of the systems that have worked hard to keep their voices and presence out of a conversation of environmentalism, and so I really want to take this moment to shine a light on their efforts here tonight. Whether we mean climate change and the epic losses and biodiversity that we face, the impending collapse of ancient ecosystems that we turn a blind eye to, or the patterns of disenfranchisement and violence both locally and abroad, that we knowingly or ignorantly support, we must remember the words of Lilla Watson, so if you don't know her, she's an indigenous Australian, uh, from the Murray people of the land that is now known as Queensland. And she said, if you have come here to help me, you are wasting your time. But if you have come here because your liberation is bound up with mine, then let us work together. I dedicate this honor and the work our school has taken on to the people of the global majority who every day are taking risks, speaking up, and leading the charge. To all of the incredible community organizations at the school, county, and state level, thank you for walking alongside us as we learn to unlearn to do better every day by being brave and humble and rooted in gratitude. Thank you for encouraging us to wake up and begin healing the soil of our schools and the soil of our minds. Extra special thanks personally to Teresa Washington and the ESD's Native American Education Department. Uh, you're an incredible partner, and I tried to convince her to come tonight, but she said no. Just kidding. <laughs> um, I'm so, she'll be at my house tomorrow, so I'll see her then. Um, I'm so proud of everything we've been able to accomplish together. I also have my principal here with me tonight, and I want to acknowledge her for providing us with the freedom that we need to call in our staff, students, and community in this important work. While I can never name everyone who's influenced my work and my thinking, I think it's important in this one little moment that I have to name some of the teachers and influencers in the hopes that maybe it plants a seed for you as well. So their names I'd like to say out loud are Rowan White, 
James Baldwin, Melissa Myers, local at Rose Island Farm, Ichioma Oluo, who we got to hear yesterday at the Capitol, Winnie Hawkins, our dear elder who has been helping us and weaving amazing baskets out of the grass we grow at school, Angela Davis, Robin Wall Kimmerer, Octavia Butler, and of course, the Puyallup and Muggleshoot tribes who relentlessly share their language and resources for free with us. I'm eternally grateful for your labor, your generosity, and your creative vision. I like to imagine that you're all up here with me right now. You've taught us that climate care is community care, and that the well-being of our students and families is indefinitely tied to the health of the land that we live on. You've taught us that liberation only comes when we're willing to confront truth with an open heart. You've taught us that as long as we have seeds, we have hope. As long as we can listen, we can learn. As long as we have a voice, we can speak truth to power. In the words of Audre Lord, your silence will not protect you. Violence that can happen to one form of life can be wrought upon any living being. So stand up, do the hard thing, even if it's uncomfortable. Stand up even if it requires you to take a deep look inside and face parts of yourself that you do not fully understand. Stand up and use your voice, because we are all in this together. And in the words of Motaz, remember to say, Free Palestine. So next up, we have Devin and Jocelyn who will be joining me to present our Volunteer of the Year Award. Oh, just, just Devin. <laughs> That was an emotional speech, hard to follow. Um, our volunteer of the year is uh, Jessica Hannity. Um, Harvest Pierce County has collaborated with Jessica Hannity in many different capacities in the past couple of years. In all these endeavors, her passion for our mission and the well-being of the people in our shared community has been made abundantly evident. While Jessica was in a paid, so not volunteer, a seasonal position this past year as a branch leader, helping us to harvest fruit in our county orchard and delivering it to various hunger relief organizations, I cannot express how far above and beyond Jessica went to see that our programming was successful, donating her labor to the cause of seeing the mission through. To highlight what I am talking about, it is important to contextualize that this year, in collaboration with the Dreamer Shaker community member, Cider Enthusiast Farm Foundation alum, and honorable veteran David Aiken, we piloted our programming to move in a new direction. I wanted to see that our pest and disease ridden fruit, which was not suitable for human consumption, did not go to waste. Um, we came up with something called the Closed Loop Community Project, where we take all of that pest and disease fruit and put it into the hands of those who could process its issues away and turn it into a valuable product that would bolster our local economy, uh, such as jam, mead, and cider, or by giving it to local livestock farmers to supplement and diversify their animals' diets. With this program, we were able to divert close to 25,000 pounds of produce otherwise destined for the waste stream to these local makers, saving them thousands of dollars on out of or other side of the state purchases. As we set out to do this, we had no idea what a success it would be. 
um, or the massive amount of poundage we would be having to coordinate pick up and drop off for without a central location to organize out of. Um, so Jessica, you may have seen a photo of um, our gleaning bins filled with apples on wooden pallets. Um, so that was her garage. Uh, on her own volition, she set up wire racks, labeling and documenting systems, and wood pallets in her underground garage to receive and store fruit. She single-handedly created a makeshift central distribution system for which she also took on the task of or organizing with branch leaders, cideries, hunger relief organizations, farmers, and staff to make sure all of this pr produce made it where it needed to go safely and efficiently. She dedicated many hours of time to assist the Closed Loop Community Project have a successful introduction year. Um, in addition to this, she made lasting connections with orchard clubs, with salmon culling stations, backyard growers, and local hunger relief organizations to further assist our efforts of finding purposeful ways to bolster our local food system, to cut waste, and fight the systems of local food injustice. So it is my distinct honor to award my collaborator and dear friend Jessica Hannity with the Pierce Conservation District's Volunteer of the Year Award, a most deserved award indeed. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jessica was not able to make it tonight because of uh, some personal reasons. Um, but she did send me something to read to you all tonight. Let me pull that up, sorry. <laughs> uh, so yeah, due to ongoing medical challenges, I'm unfortunately unable to attend the Pierce Conservation District's 2024 annual celebration this evening. I could not be more honored by Devon's nomination for my volunteer efforts with the Closed Loop Community Project in 2023. The networking and coordination, fruit sorting, storage, transport, and the planning required fit my skill set and passion for conservation and local food so well, and the amount of produce diverted to cideries, jam makers, and local farmers and their animals was so incredibly huge and satisfying that it didn't feel like work. Devin and David saw a need and created an incredible project that completely transformed the energy of the gleaning program. I was thrilled to be a part of it. I look forward to supporting the closed loop community as it expands and becomes more efficient. Thank you again, Jessica. I think I heard about Jessica um, when I was trying to find some apples for uh, another event and I was told, oh, just go to her back door. It'll be fine. There'll be a blue bin. You'll see it. It'll be fine. So that's how we work around here for our volunteers is that we all know that it'll be fine and we all help support and take care of each other. So we're sorry that Jessica couldn't be with us, but Devin, thank you for that. found my notes. Great news. Didn't need them. Don't know where we're at still. It's fine. Um, actually, I do know where we're at. We've got um, some great connections that we have within our community, not just with volunteers, but also with various agencies and various government entities that we get to work with and actually make our dollars work for all of us. So, Glenn, if you would join me to give the Public Agency of the Year Award, that would be fantastic. Thanks. So, uh, yeah, it's my honor tonight to present the Public Agency of the Year Award to uh, Robbie Wright and the City of Sumner. Um, the last uh, several years since I've started with Pierce Conservation District, um, we've been partnering with uh, the City of Sumner uh, to support them in their uh, uh, river restoration efforts on the White River. Um, you know, floodplains are great, like, 
flat valley bottoms are great for developing, uh, putting houses, warehouses, railroad tracks, roads, and everything else. But they're also really great, floodplains are great for uh, the floods in a place that have floodwaters to go. Um, and uh, the city of Sumner's uh, continually embracing that and, uh, and developing a really ambitious project along the White River, just upstream of the, uh, the confluence of the Puyallup River to uh, basically give the White River a little room to, to grow and to uh, spread out and, and engage its floodplain um, throughout a, um, a couple hundred acre project site. Um, and Robbie Wright and the city of Sumner have really gone the extra mile to secure grants, work out uh, you know, acquisitions and, and work with landowners, work with partners in the area, work with Pierce Conservation District and the Pierce County to support that work. And, um, Really, just since I've been here, I've seen Robbie kind of go the extra mile and really, you know, put in the extra time and um, extra, um, you know, energy and bringing in partners to really make that project. That's it's really a series of projects on the White River work. So, um, uh, join me in congratulating Robbie Wright and the City of Sumner uh, for the Public Agency of the Year. Thanks. I should have offered the bygone a beer to say something for me. <laughs> um, I'll keep it short. I think, uh, thank you, Glenn. Yeah, everything you said, if I could say three things of why Sumner is even up here to begin with, uh, it'd be good leadership, uh, willing attitude, and good partners. Um, thanks, Mayor Hayden and Public Works Director Michael Kosa. Them and a legacy of people before them have really pushed Sumner forward on this path. Um, it's something. Uh, you know, 10 years ago, you never would have thought happening in a small city like we are. Um, and then partners, yeah, like Glenn mentioned, the Pierce Conservation District is a great partner, Pierce County, um, the Piauk Tribe, UW. We work closely with everybody, and without all of you, we wouldn't get where we are today. So, thank you. So I'm sure that you've noticed that we have lots of really great diverse opportunities to connect with people. I'd like to invite Erica up to actually help us present one of my favorite awards, which is for the Community Food Project of the Year. I don't know about you, but I love to eat, and I love to eat good food that is grown in the beautiful soil that we have here at our fingertips. So. Oh, Devin. Devin says she wanted back on the mic, too. Oh, we're both coming up. All right, so uh, we have just some amazing soil, but some amazing farmers. Farming isn't just about putting something in the ground and hoping it grows, but it's actually about tending those spaces and making sure things grow. So I'm going to invite Erica and Devin up to give our Community Food Project of the Year award. Sorry, what? Okay, can you hear me fine? Can you hear me okay now? Thanks. Um, okay, cool. So yeah, I'm, I'm um, happy to give this award to Mother Earth Farm. Um, we have, as Harvest Pierce County, we've partnered with Mother Earth for um, many years through our um, spring seed starts um, and our farm foundations programming and then also our gleaning project. So we're going to talk about um, those different things right now. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, so Mother Earth Farm has partnered with us uh, for many years through our spring seed start distribution efforts. Um, 
In 2020, 2021, and 2022, they seeded and cared for thousands of vegetable starts that were distributed to community gardens throughout Pierce County. Mother Earth Farm was integral in increasing access to healthy vegetable starts for Pierce County community gardens during those first few years of the pandemic. And we really appreciate all of that work that y'all did in the background. Um, oh, do you want to go? Sure. Um, so our gleaning program has also been invited to harvest produce from Mother Earth Farm for several years. Um, I believe in 2020, a majority of our uh, gleaning program was only kept afloat by the partnership we had with Mother Earth Farm. Um, uh, through all of that, uh, we garnered several thousand pounds of produce for the community. Um, but more than anything, I think the staff at Mother Earth, the farmers there, the farm crew, um, they always greeted our gleaning volunteers with uh, warmness, enthusiasm, educating them how to best harvest and treat their beautiful produce. And, less, and left a lasting impression with their warm encouragement. Thanks. And my, my personal favorite part of this um, is that since 2022, uh, Mother Earth has been uh, hosting some of our field days for our farm training program, Farm Foundations, where participants, some harvest staff, and then the Mother Earth staff all come together to work and learn in the field one to two times a month. This year we'll be there twice a month and we're really excited about that. Um, we made that decision based on consistently getting feedback from our Farm Foundation's cohort that, Mother Earth, that the Mother Earth farmers are not just knowledgeable and considerate and kind, but they're also super fun to work with and be around. Um, so thank you all for um, welcoming us into your space and allowing us to farm in community with you. Um, and I, as much of your crew as you want to come up to accept this award, please come up here. Can you hear me? Yes? Fabulous. Thank you all so much for having us, Mother Earth Farm. Uh, we are a strong and mighty crew uh, who does have a really good time farming. <laughs> uh, we invite y'all to come over and volunteer with us if you're so inclined to also have a fun time, whether it's raining or if it's sunny. Uh, we also have ice cream, so please come <laughs> over. <laughs> But we're so grateful for the partnership that we've been able to grow with Pierce County Conservation District. We love partnering with them through all of these different events that we are able to host at Mother Earth Farm. Um, we're grateful for the land and the opportunity for the past 24 years to farm um, and be with the soil and be with the community members as we continue to grow produce for our community members for free. Uh, thank you so much for the recognition and joy that you've shared with us, especially everyone at Harvest Pierce, the Harvest Pierce County team. And we really look forward to 2024 as we continue to have more joyful moments with you.
All right. Well, I know we're a little over on time, but I think the reality is, is that that means that we've had a good night. We've gotten to celebrate some amazing people who help create a fantastic opportunity for all of us to eat, live, and enjoy our space as well. Please remember that as you have the opportunity to, you can come and join us and be on this list of awardees if you'd like to volunteer with us. And if you'd like to spend some time getting to know our community better, please reach out to us as the evening comes to an end. We're still gonna be here till about eight o'clock because the voting polls are still open. If you have not voted yet, please make sure to vote before you leave. That was in my voice of the like caveat at the bottom of everything. Uh, please make sure to vote. Please make sure that you spend some time with each other enjoying the spaces that we create and take a look at all the, the fantastic things that we do. We have posters out throughout the, the um, walkways so you can go and you can take a look at things. I again want to thank all of my team. The PCD team has been amazing. I've been here for two years. Last year was my first year at this event and this just keeps getting better and better. Thank you all from our finance team who helped check people in and who helped set things up to our AmeriCorps team who helped put together scripts. <laughs> to all of our program directors who are tirelessly working to figure out uh, what is Dana having planned for us next. Uh, P.S. We do not have a leadership team meeting in the morning. I canceled that. Um, and to everyone who is the boots on the ground, which is the heart and soul of Pierce Conservation District, I thank you and I appreciate all of you. Make sure to take home a tree. If you find a tree with a name on it that you like, you can take that friend home with you. Make sure to plant it. Um, and there is one other thing that I have to do. Anybody know what that is? Yeah. Selfie. Again, thank you all for being here. Thank you for participating in all the great work that PCD does, and we will see you next year.